Hi there, and welcome to the video. So I'm in Photopea, I'm just going to click New Project, and then I'm going to go to the FB Event Image, which basically just gives you a 1080p canvas, which um, is perfect for the demonstration I'm doing here. So first of all, I'm going to go down to the Adjustment Layers tab at the bottom, and I'm going to change the Color Fill. So go all the way to the top, click Color Fill. But you can use the icons in your adjustments at the top. I'm going to choose something black or close to black anyway. Let's just choose solid black, just so you can see the effect uh, more clearly. So now we've got the black layer as the background. Obviously, you could use whatever dark background you wanted for this, but it does really have to be dark for the effect to stand out. I'm just going to press T for the type tool. I'm just going to click, and I'm just going to type um, sparkle. Type whatever word you like. It doesn't matter. And I'm just going to position it roughly in the middle. Now, if you click here to look at the text, it's on the font Denk 1 that I've just been um, using for this, but you can adjust it to whatever font you like. Works better on slightly thicker fonts, but it's definitely worth experimenting. So once I've got this um, word here, this text typed out, I'm going to bring my image in, my image of the sparkle texture, which I've put a link to in the description box for a free download. So I'm just going to drag that in from my desktop into the document. I'm going to just scale this up so it matches the width of my my text. I might just squash it up a bit like that. Anyway, when it's roughly the width of my text, or at least the width of my text, I'm just going to go to the icon for that layer in the Layers panel, hold the Alt key, and just click on the layer icon itself. And it will clip it to the layer below, which is the text, which means now it's constrained to the text layer. So I can position it up and down because the image is taller. See so if I move it to the side, I'm going to cut off the edge, but you get the idea. So I'm going to put it just where there's a nice mixture of smaller details and some more out of focus details, something like that. And then I'm going to go to my super bloom effect, which is where this really comes to life. Now, if you haven't had this installed before, you won't see it on here, but it's a free plugin and I'll show you how quick it is to install it. Go up to the window menu and go to plugins. And on mine, at least, it's the first one here Super Bloom by Lunal Graphics. If you can't see it in the same place as mine, just have a quick scan around or just go into the search bar and type Super Bloom and it'll appear. Then you can just click on it, click add plugin, and in two seconds you're away. Um, and it will appear as this little triangular icon down in the bottom. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to bring up a preview window. I'm just going to stretch this out from the bottom left corner just to make the preview window as big as possible. So I'll quickly talk this through from the top down. Threshold affects how much of the image, um, sorry, threshold is how much of the uh, how much of the image is affected by the glow or the bloom. So in layman's terms, if you go all the way to the right, it's affecting only the absolute most bright areas of the image, and the more you go to the left, it's affecting more and more areas until it's just affecting almost everything okay depth is almost like how much it glows or it it sort of emits from those points so as you, we can see the effect as i'm pointing left and right and radius has a similar has a similar effect but it's actually sort of calculated slightly differently but the balance between these top three will give you your overall look of your glow um, and I'm going to do this, but I don't want a big glow like this, although you might like, might like that. I want to make it like little sparkles, like just so that some of the, some of the, um, bits of glitter are just catching the light. So I don't want a big radius. I want a small radius. I don't want a big depth either. I don't want a huge threshold. So I'm going to do something like this for a bit more of a subtle look. What you will notice is the glow is red at the moment, um, which is unusual because it's not. there's no red in the image, but it's automatically adding that on. Well, we can change that by clicking the Colorize button, and it's defaulted to this orange color, which is giving it a red glow. So all we need to do is go into it, and what I like to do is click the eyedropper icon and just go and choose more of a a yellowy colour that was present in the original to give us a little bit more glow. And I might even adjust that from here, warm it up a little bit. But we can do that in a second. So that's something a bit more natural. 
and then come down opacity you can obviously fade the, the effect of the color now this is opacity for the color change not for the um not for the overall effect brightness we can sort of add a bit of post color brightness to it or back it off saturation self-explanatory and hue shift here we can adjust add a bit of warmth to the effect or push it more towards the other way and we can change the hue and of the um glow here afterwards and then preview you can preview the areas that are just getting the glow you can preview none which is not very useful you can preview the full effect so once you've got this here and you're happy with it you can click add to document and now what's happened is it's appeared on top of the layers panel now because we've got this preview window set up we need to just get this out of the way and close this so we can see our document again so you can just click on the original icon at the bottom to do that so now we've got our layer on top and it's automatically put it to a screen blending mode which is kind of typical for this kind of effect um, but if we can change that if we want we can change it to some out lighten which makes it a little bit more subtle again it's not affecting as much of the pixels inside and i quite like that um, and you can change it to whatever you want you can try all sorts of different effects and see what kind of cool different options you can get some of them can get a bit crazy but it's all about experimenting and just seeing what you can get remember you can always play with the opacity of this so that's how to get an easy sparkling effect in Photobee.